Hey, welcome back uh, to Brashonomics on a uh, day where we don't have a space shuttle program anymore. Exploration, although maybe in your hearts and your minds, is no longer part of the United States government as far as it comes to space. And, you know, I, I, I bring this up not because of the actual space program. It has a lot more to do with, you know, just the, the goal of people just being educated and learning. And I think that when you take some of these goals away from people, maybe it's to learn more about space, maybe it's just to learn more in general. When you take some of the aspects or some of the things people can focus on away, I think it hurts everything. I think it just, it, 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 it's the opposite of broadening horizons. It just diminishes them. And one thing that I think people don't know a lot about because there's so many commercials that are misinforming, they're misleading, is certainly their nutrition. And although we don't talk about nutrition all the time, there is some huge financial impact of being healthier, positive financial impacts of being healthier. Along with being a food and nutrition coach, Sarah Adler is the author and creator of the popular Simply Real Food blog, where she also shares weekly simple healthy recipes and her love of good food. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Ben. How are you today? I'm great. How are you? Good, good. So, you know, let's uh, jump into eating healthy because this is something that, I, you know, educating yourself on what eating healthy is really can have a huge impact on your life. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think there's, a you know, something to be said about a lot of people are confused what eating healthy actually means. You know, like you said, there's so many diet plans out there. We hear a different message every day, and it's hard to know what to believe um, and who to believe. And so I think, you know, just kind of... Like, don't believe Jenny Craig. Right. Exactly. Makes sense. Yeah. And it's much more about, like, well, what what does being healthy mean? What is healthy food? And, um, you know, for the most part, healthy food just means food that's more normal, more natural, kind of like on the outside of the grocery store, um, the perimeter, instead of thinking about the ways that food can be marketed to us and packaged in certain ways. And that's kind of where we get into, you know, healthy food being more expensive or is it really less expensive when you're thinking about true healthy food, meaning food that's been around for a really long time. Um, and you know, Not like old, moldy for a long right, time, like right. things your body, right? Right, things that are around, you know, fruits and vegetables and produce and meat and fish and eggs and, you know, things that you could grow if you wanted to, if you had the time. Um, or that you can buy in places that are, you know, have, you can buy them at farmer's markets, but you can also buy them at any kind of grocery store. It's just a matter of knowing what to focus on. So I think it's more about the content of your food rather than just the marketing label, the packaging, even how many calories, protein, carbs, fat are in the well, food. Well, let's talk about labels for just a second, because I know that in real estate and finance, things have been mislabeled for mm -hmm. a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I think in the food, you know, and, and there's been big reform on that. Right. The food industry is kind of going through the same thing, isn't it? Where it is. you can't just say whatever you want to try to sell the food. Right. Right. And they're, and they're starting to kind of, you know, there really is no regulation um, around food marketing and labels. And so the more important thing to actually look at at your food is are the ingredients and what it's actually made of versus what it claims to be on the front of the package. If it's, Claiming to be low calorie and sugar free and lots of fiber, there's probably some indication, you know, that it's not all that real, not all that clean, not all that healthy to begin with. And so when you start looking at that, I mean, typically you're talking about just more processed foods. Right. So is there, okay, like processed foods, I'm going to just give an example of something that I know a lot of people like protein shakes. Right. Is that overly processed and not good for you? I mean, those have not been along since. Right. Like more than maybe 10 or 15 years. Right. Yeah, exactly. I would say that those are, most of them are pretty processed. And when you look at the ingredients, um, that's how you can really tell is how processed something is would be like, if you tried to make that, could you? Well, probably not because protein shakes, there's probably lists of, you know, and artificial sweeteners and sugars and strange chemicals and things that we really just don't understand to read on a label, but also our bodies don't understand when we ingest them. So when you start looking at all these at, at a label, I mean, I, I've heard mm -hmm. that if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not good for you. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. And is there a way to, I mean, so how do you end up, I mean, what, how do you end up buying these foods? Is it mm -hmm. because most, most things in a package mm -hmm. have something with an OSE in them, whether it's fructose or seructose or, Something else, oh, and it's got it. They have a lot of sugar. Where do you 
buy the foods that are that are not that are healthy. Yeah, you can buy them almost in any grocery store. And I think that's, you know, one of the big kind of misconceptions is that people think if they buy all organic, you know, at at stores that are more naturally driven like Whole Foods or PCC or Trader Joe's, any of those that they are by default being healthy. Um, and I think, you know, the more important thing is not necessarily where you shop um, chain wise or brand wise, but where you're actually shopping in the store um, and that you can get a lot of healthy food, um, even at a farmer's market or a produce stand. And it's just a matter of actually maybe knowing more so what to do with that food. And a lot of people have kind of gotten away from this educating themselves about how to actually cook and how to prepare. And it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, but, you know, learning more about it instead of just taking the easy way out. We think that we're too busy. And um, I think there's been a lot of repercussions that have started to happen with our health because of that. Talk a little bit about not only the, the repercussions to your health, but the actual cost of these bad processed foods. You had said, I mean, not only are they typically more expensive, you brought up an apple versus a fruit roll up, which I don't think anybody has ever argued which would be more healthy. Mm-hmm. But you know, there's this element of still being hungry, what they rely upon, sugar, caffeine. I mean, these right. are all bad things or not bad, but this doesn't keep you filled up. You end up eating more and more. Right. And I think that's the thing. When you are eating more normal, kind of healthy, real food, you are actually full because everything that you're eating, every bite you take has so much more nourishment, so much, so many more vitamins, so many more minerals, a lot more fiber naturally. Um, and it and it fills you up and you actually eat less um, because when you are eating you're eating stuff that can actually be used as fuel instead of just you know used to keep you propped up and try to get you through your day and you know then you kind of are always you know on a sugar crash or you're you know these highs and lows throughout the day Um, and so you actually you the volume of food that you eat will be a lot less when you start to eat in a cleaner way um, and can be a lot less expensive too. And then talk about also, I mean, like your medical bill. I mean, you say the food is kind of like your medical bill. Mm-hmm. It is, absolutely. And I, and I think people kind of get so focused into like what they're doing just in that moment um, and don't kind of take a bigger look at the picture. Like, hey, you know, if you eat healthier, you're going to get sick less often. You're going to feel better. You're going to have, you know, more energy. And seeing it in that big um, and seeing in that much bigger way kind of gives you that you, you probably will have fewer medical bills long term. I mean, not saying that you won't ever get sick or that you won't ever have to go to the hospital, but it will be the occurrence of that happening will be a lot less likely. Uh, we're here with Sarah Adler, food and nutrition coach, just talking a little bit about the finances of, uh, you know, of eating healthy. Uh, Sarah, do you have any just shopping tips for people who might be headed to the grocery store on, mm-hmm. you know, on the on eating healthier. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, so every week there's always, you know, no matter what store you go to, there's always, um, kind of seasonal weekly deals. So even when you look at the produce section, um, to kind of find and base your meals around what's on sale that week, which is hard to do for a lot of people because they're so stuck in their certain routine, but then they end up eating the same foods all the time and that's not good either. So kind of basing your, your menu or your meals, Um, on the stuff that's on sale is a great thing to do. Um, And then also checking out different, um, the different parts of the bulk section. So in a lot of grocery stores now, the bigger ones, they have a whole bulk section where you basically are paying just for the food. You, you can, you know, it's dried beans, but there's nut and, you know, nuts and peanut butter and there's dried fruit and um, things where you're only paying by the pound. So if you just need a small amount um, or if you're going to buy at a bigger volume and you don't have to pay for the packaging and there's no boxes or marketing, it's a lot less expensive to do it that way. And so, you know, when you're going in and, and considering your grocery bill, mm-hmm. it's kind of like if you're only going to eat two bananas, not buying the whole package, right? Right. Right. Yeah. And a lot of people go and they go with this mentality like I need to shop and get everything I need for the week and have a plan and have a meal plan for every day. And you know what? That's just not practical. And so it's more about kind of having stuff around that you can go to and grab. And maybe you plan for, you know, three meals a week, three dinners that you know you're at least going to be home three times a week and having stuff around to do that. And then maybe even the foresight to make a little bit more so you can have extras for lunch the next day. Well, certainly people are busy and, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, having the ability to 
eat healthy and knowing that it's not only helping their you know their waistline but also <laughs> their pocketbook i think it's something that a lot of people will appreciate absolutely uh sarah thanks so much for joining us again that's sarah adler food nutrition coach and with simply real food blog also um when we come back you know people are trying to get educated on food but they're also trying to get educated on what they need to do prior to retirement and going into it to make it as successful as their potential diet if they're eating the right things. Dallas Evans is going to join us when we come back. We'll be right back after this break. 